What is going on everybody? This is Luis back with the next video of JUnit. So in the first and the second video, I've explained why we need to test our Java application using JUnit, which is a framework for testing our units in Java program. In this video, I will explain the term assertion. So the term assertion or assertion is used by JUnit for all of its unit test case. JUnit provides overloaded assertion method for all the primitive data types, also for objects and arrays of primitives or arrays of objects. The parameter order of an assertion statement is expected value followed by the actual value. We will look at the example as well. Optionally, the first parameter can actually be a string message that is used for output if there is a failure. Assertions can be used to compare expected and actual values of for array, single values, objects, and even null values. They can be compared if they are equal, not equal, the same. There are several types of assertions such as assert equal, assert false, and so on. Before we talk about a methods available in JUnit assert class, I want to give you an example how to test your code and how we can do a unit testing of a Java application, right, using NetBeans. So we have three popular IDs, NetBeans, IntelliJ IDEA, and Eclipse for Java. I will do a separate video of each of the IDE, how you can do a unit testing using JUnit of a Java application, because the process, the process of unit testing is going to be a little bit different in different IDEs, such as different in NetBeans, different in IntelliJ IDEA, and different in Eclipse. Now, let me give you an example how to run a test of a particular code. Now, we have the class named testExample.java. I don't have anything yet in the class. Now, let's create a method for testing. Let's just type public method and return type. We're going to say int and I'm going to name my method add number. Very simple example. So you guys understand what I'm talking about and how this unit testing can help you to make a better code without bugs. And uh, here in the parameters, I'm going to pass two variables. So let's just say A int B. Now we're going to return A plus B. So we have this method. To make sure that method is working without any error, without any bug, we need to make a test class for this. So in NetBeans, how do we do that? I'm going to give you a simple way to do that, all right? Just simply right click on your class, go to tools and click on create update test. Once you click on that, you will see this dialog box. Here is telling you that what is going to be the package location and the package name for test class. What is going to be the test class name? And then we have the framework. We are using JUnit, which is the popular one. And we have some code generations. I'll leave that as a default, but you can look at it. This is just generating your public protected and uh, package private, some of the general code, right? Don't worry about it. Now, we make sure we check the integration tests, okay? And let's click on OK. It is going to generate a new class for us. Let's look at the class. I'm going to delete these comments. And then in this class, we have a few methods starting with the different annotations. If you're not sure with annotations, you need to study about it. These are these annotations play a major role in Java application development. I haven't made a course yet, but in the future, I'll probably make a separate course for all the Java annotations. Now, we not worry about these methods so far because these methods have different annotations and they mean different, okay? What we are looking at is test annotation. So the test annotation means that this method is being tested by JUnit because it's starting from at test. That's a annotation. We tagged with this method by this annotation. Now I'm just going to delete the code in this method first. Now we have the method public wide test add numbers. It actually automatically named our method adding a test text before the actual name of the method in text example dot Java. Let's go back to test class. Now here to run the test, you simply have to right click 
and then test file. The shortcut key for that is Control F6. Let's run it. And now you can see the result window opened and it's telling me that test example that test example IT passed. So we did not have any error. We had one method which didn't have anything yet. So it passed and it uh, it was done in 0 0.002 second. Now let's use those arguments in this test and use a third equal method from a third class of J unit. To use that, I actually I could actually make this method static, but uh, for now we just create an object. So let's create an object from that class. So test example. I'm going to name it test is equal to new test example. We created an object. Now I'm going to uh, define few variables here. So int a is equal to I can say six. Oops, I need to put the semicolon instead of single quotes here. And we need another int variable. I'm going to call it b. And I'm going to pass the value of 8. And then after we created this object, I'm going to create another int variable. And we can name it result is equal to we can use that test object dot and we call that method in that class and here we can pass it a and b so the result we're gonna get from that method in this class it is going to be stored oops I made a mistake here let's undo all right so that result will be saved in this variable result and its data type is int now let's test that whether it's working without any bug. So to do that, I'm going to use a J unit assert class, A double S E R T, and we can use equal method. So this method will expect two values, object expected and object actual. So we can test what we are expecting from this method. We are expecting the result is uh, 8 plus 6 is going to be 14. We are expecting 14, so I type 14 here. Press enter and we pass in the object where we're getting the result. So we'll test these two, which uh, equal means that this is testing, this must be the same. So we have uh, tested 14 is a uh, expected and the result is going to be whatever the result we get from this method and we're passing these two parameters six and eight well basically it's true that it's going to give me the 14 results so let's see what happens to run the test in netbeans you need to right click and click on test file there's a different way to run the test in eclipse and intellij idea i've already said that i will do a separate video of these two ides and how to do unit testing in those ides let's click run test now congratulations so our test been successfully passed so we got the test result test add number passed and it was done in 0.004 second now what if we change the value i say to this test that i'm expecting 4 instead of 14 so what it will do it will tell me that the value i'm expecting is this the same result i'm getting from this method or not so let's test the file again and this time it will run and then as you can see it gives us an error so the best thing about netbeans it actually tells you what is an error so let's just open it up and it's telling me that expected 4 but actual was 14 so that is an error so we can see we we'll go back and we we'll check the method why we're getting the wrong value because we are expecting 4 and we are getting result 14 and we will find out that oh the variables had the values differently so the result we were getting it's uh, actually right because we had these values so if I change these values to 2 by 2 and we run the test again and this time I'm getting a result 4 and I'm expecting 4 and it should pass the test alright so it worked now we look at this uh, with another method now let's create a method of strings so let's just type string as a data type add strings 
and we pass the parameters string C string E and then we can actually write return them by concatenating them so C plus E save the file let's go to the test and then we we'll write another test so I'm gonna write another test for that method so we start with the annotation test and then we start writing our test method so let's just push it down public and you can say wide and we're gonna name it you can name it whatever you want but it's good because it's a test method so we start with the test so we finish with the test so test add string and then here we create two string variables to pass the values or you can just simply pass the values on the method so we can say test example test one is equal to new test example and we created an object we had to create an object because this object is part of this method it is not accessible in different if we had this object uh, specified here outside the method then we were we could uh, we could access that but now we have to create a new method a new object from that class so now let's just uh, call that and store the result in result result one is equal to and we can say test one dot add strings and then here I can pass in the string so I'll just type my name always Mirza whoops I need to put the quotation here and let's get rid of this word add a semicolon now we can test the results and whatever we're expecting so I'm gonna type assert equals and I'm expecting the value of always Mirza and we can say I'm going to check this with a variable which has our result which is result one now let's run this test what do you think it's gonna give me an error or it's gonna pass the test right click test file Wow congratulations so we passed both tests let's open it up now we got the add number which was passed and add string which was passed as well what if I remove this a what it's going to tell me what's an error now let's run the test again now I should get an error because the expected is a vase and mirrors not a vase and mirrors so let's open it up the result and the first one was passed successfully and the second one failed the reason why it's telling me down here if you look at here it's telling me a vase mirza is expected so a is missing damn it a vase mirrors is expecting but the actual value we were getting from this method was a vase mirza as you can see it added the a in a uh, square bracket so you can see what's the difference between the actual value and expected value so that's how you can use assert equal to run your test now with the uh, with a assert class there are so many methods I'm gonna take you to the documentation so here we have assert false assert not null assert not same assert null assert same and so on now the first as the name suggests equals it gets then the actual value and the actual result so actually expected value and the result next we have assert false so it should be false so if the function returns true then it would still it will it will be false as well so it won't run the method it won't run the test we have a certain not null it has to be it has to be something in the method otherwise it won't run the test so you can check whether the method has something or not by using assert not null assert not same that saying should not be the same object so if you want to check the expected value and the result is not same then it will pass the test so you can check with expected and the result and as you can see it shouldn't be same so you can use this a certain null should be null okay the matter return value should be null 
so you can check whether the return value or result is null or not by passing or using this test method uh, assert null now we have so on we will talk about this in the next video where I will show you how to use IntelliJ IDEA to run the test so thanks for watching guys if you like the video and uh, yeah if you like the video smash the like button and if you have any question you're always welcome to message me on Twitter or you can comment below that's fine and I will try to answer your questions thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe because I'm working very hard to make all these videos for you guys and I hope you guys enjoying it and getting some knowledge uh, or from my videos so yeah thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video cheers